Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. In today's video, I'd like to go over my beginner's level photography workshop that I actually get a chance to do a couple times a year here in Japan. This workshop focuses a lot on the importance of composition and timing in your photography with specific nods to action photography and what I do when I'm out shooting. So if you're a beginner photographer or you just kind of want a little bit of a brush up on some of the more basic things that you should keep in mind when shooting, then, you know, come along and check it out. So to start off my workshop, I always give a little bit of a self-introduction just so people know what kind of a photographer I am and that I'm actually credited as a photographer. So I'll just go through the slides here that I have set up for my workshop and uh, you know, watch along. So the first thing I always say in these workshops is I love photography. I've been doing photography since high school, which was uh, graduated in 1996. So you do the math on that one. And I did it for a hobby for a long time while doing sparse jobs here and there when I lived in Vancouver. And then when I moved to Japan, again, I just kept it as a hobby. And then one day I got invited out to a shoot with Red Bull. They liked my work and that's been a 12 year relationship. And you know, since then I've worked with a lot of other different companies and that along the way, but I'll just, you know, go through and show you some of my favorite images that I've taken. So you get a feel of what kind of photographer I am and that I'm not just some guy who's picked up, uh, you know, photography in the last couple of days and is just trying to do something on the internet here. So, you know, I, uh, I do a lot of stuff with BMX. I, I love uh, Flatland BMX a lot. You'll see a lot of my photos of Flatland BMX around. I like action a lot, you know, parkour. I really enjoyed shooting the Red Bull cliff diving when we had it here in Japan. Uh, FMX is at my core. It's the first uh, action sports category of sports that I shot here in Japan. I did it for a long time and it's what uh, got me connected with Red Bull. So I'm very grateful for that. You know, Flatland BMX, some skateboarding here and there. I do a lot of portrait work um, for my work. Uh, this is Rim Nakamura when he just came on to the Red Bull team here in Japan. We shot this down in Kyoto. And you know, in Tokyo as well, I get to shoot some MotoGP riders. This was up in Rishiri Island in Hokkaido, you know, in the middle of nowhere, shooting um, Levi here. Yeah, I was shooting him here on the top of this mountain, Rishiri Island, crazy adventure. Red Bull Air Race, I did that five years in a row. You know, just a small, simple uh, Red Bull Snow Charge event here in Japan, but I was I love getting smiles in my photos, showing people having fun, it's always great. Culture is a big aspect of what I shoot, DJs, uh, the Red Bull 3 style event, I shot the World Finals once in Tokyo and once in Taiwan. Great experience, crazy, shooting from 2 in the afternoon to 7 in the morning for a week and a bit. It's rough, but it's fun. Breakdancing I love too. B-Boy Taisuke, one of my good friends, I love shooting him. Now, other than Red Bull, I do a lot of commercial work as well. So I shot this for Nikon, it's the cover of their catalog for the D7500 here in Japan. Shot this for uh, Sony's, the Sony Action Cam. I did the whole catalog in Thailand. Magazine covers, some stuff for different uh, shoe companies. Puma, Puma's awesome. Dancers, this guy is uh, Sekai, he's in exile. He's one of my friends, shot him for magazine. Other just magazine stuff and portraits. So that's about me, enough about me, just real quick. If you have any questions or comments about me or my photos and anything, you know, hit me up in the comments, not a problem. So before you get into all the shutter speeds and apertures and ISO and everything on your camera, there's a few things I feel that a photographer should really understand first and foremost when they go out shooting and trying to get cool images. And one of those things is composition. And in my mind, composition is king. You can't have an interesting photo without good composition. When I'm out shooting, one of the first things that goes through my mind is, do I want to shoot this shot horizontal or vertical? I know this is very basic, but I'll go through why this is important now. So first off with horizontal. So generally horizontal, in other words, it's called a landscape image. So that's because a lot of landscape shooting is shot with the camera horizontal. Um, and when you're shooting action sports, a lot of times what I do when I shoot an, a horizontal image is I'm shooting this because I really want to emphasize the background. I really want to emphasize the environment that my athlete is performing in. So you see here, this is a Saksa Shrine. Uh, in Tokyo. We went there one night and we shot a couple action shots here in the temple. If I shot this vertical, I would miss out a lot of the cool stuff on the sides here. So shooting it horizontal, yes, he, the rider is a little bit smaller, but I really like how the uh, horizontal composition of this image really shows the background and shows the environment that my rider is in. That goes for this shot here of Vicky Gomez as well. You know, even if he wasn't in this image, I think this would be a kind of an interesting landscape shot, but then I threw him in there. So. A lot of times with action sports photography, even if your athlete's not in the shot, if it's a cool landscape image, it should be a good photo with or without your athlete. 
So then putting them in there is an extra bonus and it can be a really, really cool action shot. But if you don't have a good landscape shot first or a good composition and a good place environment to shoot, then it's kind of hard to get a really cool shot. So now this shot here, we have Kenny Bailey up on the television tower in uh, Nagoya. Um, this was a shot that we did quite a few years ago. And I think if I did it vertical, you know, it wouldn't have shown this huge aspect of the city. I really wanted to have this as a horizontal shot, a nice landscape shot of the city with him on his bike jumping up and down here. Yeah, so this turned out really, really cool. Here again, with bouldering, you know, the athletes are very, very close to the ground sometimes. So if I shot this vertical, I would have got a lot more of the ground in it, or it would have been a really, really too tight of a shot. So by putting this horizontal, I got all the little holds and stuff like that on the wall here, and it goes across to this climber. And you don't really see the ground that much, so you kind of just still get a feeling that she's a little bit up there. But if I had shot this vertical, it would be way too confined in that to this, to this image. Saying that, there are some reasons and some places where I do prefer to shoot vertical. In here, uh, you noticed on the left here, this is Rim Nakamura jumping in, uh, in this one shot and by shooting this vertical it really emphasizes his height and putting him right at the top in this composition of this image as well. Uh, if I was to shoot this horizontal and add more of the atmosphere you know it would still look like he's really jumping quite high but by putting this vertical and putting him in this position right at the top of the frame, I really get to emphasize his height here. And I'm pretty much as low as I can get. I want to get really nice and low and up on this. And it really, you know, it emphasizes his height. So whenever you're trying to show somebody really jumping high, it can be good to go vertical and really put them at the top of that frame to just really show the exact maximum amount of their height in there. And then on the one on the right here, now there's a bit of a story with this shot. On the left and right, there was, on the right there was a bunch of media. And on the left, there was a few people in the crowd. And I really didn't want to show that because it was kind of a messy uh, part of the frame. So what I want to say is going vertical and going a little bit tighter, you can actually cut down on a lot of stuff around the sides that you don't want to have in your image. If I was to shoot this horizontal and cut down that much, I'd have to go in and probably trim it right up to his thighs and cut it down in that kind of a frame. And that's a little bit too tight for this kind of a shot. I really want to show the ground and where he's running up and all the people behind him. So by shooting this vertical, I was able to cut all that side stuff off there. And it can be a really good way to crop your images basically when you're shooting is just by going vertical. Here again with the fisheye going vertical, I was able to cut down all the stuff on the sides. And same with this one here with Tokura jumping with his ball. Um, I was able, I wanted to go vertical to emphasize all these sakura and give it a nice composition here. If I had gone horizontal, could have been good, I think, but there was just too much stuff on the sides and around here. There was like on this one on the left, there was a car on the side, and I just didn't want to show that. So, you know, sometimes if you have a lot of stuff around you and you got an athlete that doesn't mind, go with a fisheye and get really tight and vertical. You can really emphasize the action and kind of cut away a lot of the stuff on the sides that you don't want to see anyways. Now, vertical is how I'm saying it right now, but there's another word for it, which is portrait. Portrait mode, portrait uh, composition. And this is basically what a lot of people do when they're shooting people. So I find, um, you know, not always, but a lot of times when I'm shooting people, I will also use a vertical composition in my images just because it seems more natural to the human eye. We're used to seeing people, shots of people in this vertical composition, this portrait composition. So next time you're shooting someone, you know, try to shoot a lot of the portrait, this vertical, when they're doing these kind of uh, face shots and that, because it really cuts down a lot of the stuff you don't want to have around. You can get a nice bust up shot if it's vertical. Whereas if you're shooting horizontal, you know, you could do an environmental portrait where you get more of the environment in it. But if you're doing these closer up ones, I think, uh, you know, a nice vertical shot makes it simple. You can shoot horizontal if you want, but just saying, you know, these vertical shots of people's faces, they're called portrait. It's called portrait mode and portrait for a reason because they've been doing these kind of things for hundreds of years, uh, this kind of uh, portrait style of image. And our brain is really used to it. Our eyes are used to seeing it. So it's a very natural way of shooting these kind of portraits. Sometimes when I'm out shooting, or most often, I need to shoot uh, many different angles in the same spot. So when I'm, this is the Red Bull 400 shot up in Sapporo. So this image, you know, I'm shooting from below, and what I emphasize, what I want to emphasize here, is the dauntingness of the the road ahead for these people. So by shooting it vertical, I'm again emphasizing the height here and kind of showing this path down that they have to take that's really hard and uh, arduous trail. And I'm also cutting off a lot of the stuff that you see on the side. Like, so on the left-hand side, you know, there's this chairlift that I wanted to kind of cut out as much as I could. And there's all this empty CD on the right. So I really didn't want to show that. So I cut that out. But now when I'm up up top and I can see the city, now I want to go into horizontal so I can show the whole environment and the area and the people coming up and really struggling with this. And I wanted to show the whole city of Sapporo down below. So, you know, in the same spot, depending on what I want to show in the image, and how I want to portray the shot, I might shoot vertical or I might shoot horizontal. I might shoot both at the same time and choose later. I don't know. But there's always a reason behind that. If you want to show the environment more and show what's going on, most of the times, you know, nine times out of the ten, I would shoot horizontal. If you want to get a little bit more tied up, emphasize some height of the jump that an athlete is doing or something like that, 
going vertical is great. It cuts out a lot of you know information you don't need on the sides. Okay, so now you have your camera position, vertical or horizontal, for your shot. Now, how do you want to position your own body? So the way I think about it is, you know, if you're just walking around and what you see and you're standing in a real position and you're shooting, then the images you're going to capture are basically the same thing you're seeing all day long. You know, it's the same height, same eye, eye uh, position that you see all the time. So images aren't really going to be maybe all that interesting to you. They could just be just, you know, whatever you're seeing. Maybe that's what you want to shoot. But a lot of times you want to actually change your position from lower or higher than you normally be seeing, than normal people would be seeing every day. I myself, I'm quite tall. I'm 187 centimeters tall, so I like to go down a lot. I, 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 I squat a lot while I'm shooting, I go down. So, you know, any given day when I'm shooting a lot, I might squat 100 or 200 or 300 times. My, you know, my legs get really tired at the end of the day. For example, for this shot, it's a gentleman in a wheelchair, he's an Olympic athlete. Um, and I got really low, sitting on the ground, almost laying on the ground, because I wanted to get actually below his eyesight. I find when I'm shooting portraits a lot of time, I like to get below the eyesight of uh, the person I'm shooting. So I'll get as low as I can. And I don't know, for me, aesthetically, I just, I, I find that appealing. A lot of these athletes, I'm taking hero shots, so they need to seem bigger than life, larger than life. So by getting down a little bit lower, it kind of gives them a bit more of a, an atmosphere of, uh, you know, greatness to them, a bit more of a hero shot. And you can see here with rim here now. And another thing, you know, people with a lot of the athletes that I shoot wear hats. No, a lot of them wear a brimmed hat. So by getting down below, I'm easily getting their, their eyes in the shot and it's not getting uh, obstructed by the brim of their hat. So this is something I always do. I uh, make sure that, uh, you know, I want to see their eyes. I also want to show the branding on here so I don't go too low. But you know, I do get a little bit lower than their eyesight. And again, just I want to make them look as heroic as possible. Now, I do shoot a lot of breakdance competitions, and one angle that I find that I really like is getting as low to the stage as I can. You'll notice here that the front of the image here on the bottom is a little bit out of focus. That's just the, you know, the front bokeh on the image because I'm actually taking my lens and putting it almost right on the dance floor. A lot of the times when these guys are dancing, like you can see here Hong Ten and Taisuke, uh, Hong Ten is, his head's really low to the ground. So if I was shooting up higher, Maybe I wouldn't see his face as well. I always like to show the athlete's face as best as I can. So I find shooting, shooting really low with these breakdance competitions really makes it really dynamic. And it's an angle uh, not many people shoot because sometimes I actually have to lay down on the floor. And so it's really unique and it's quite cool. And also you get these really cool light flares sometimes when you're shooting from below. You know, any kind of action shot when you're below wide angle and the action's coming right at you is dynamic. It's really exciting. These guys almost crash into me. It's quite scary, but uh, you know, it's, it's always good I find to, uh, if you're gonna shoot, get really low as you can. Again. These guys have visors on their helmets. I want to see their eyes. I want to see the emotion in there. So I get nice and low. Now, the opposite of that would be going up and above. So you can see here, this is Miho. Uh, with, this is at the Red Bull Ashura. I wanted to get an image of her coming up, coming up the rock face. So what I had to do was actually climb up the rock face around the back, around before she could get up there and stand up above her. And I think I'm shooting with a 50 mil here to really get the bokeh and there's a lot of, maybe too much branding here. So having this above shot is really cool because I can see the, the emotion in her face and in her eyes and she's looking for the next hold and where she's gonna go. It's actually a very difficult climb here. I should mention, safety is really, really important here. I'm very careful not to kick any rocks into her eyes or any dust off the side because I don't want her to fall and hurt herself or anything like that. Uh, but I find with these sports, when people are coming towards the camera climbing up, this can be a really dynamic and really amazing shot. Safety is a huge concern though. Another thing when you're shooting above that I really love to play with are shadows. So by shooting above at certain times of the day, you can see these shadows on the ground here. I got lucky with the bird, that wasn't my timing. But you can really play with the shape and the, the shadows in here. And I just, I love it when I can find a, a nice high shot down that I can see both the athlete and the shadows. Again, here are two great examples. We have Kane Chi doing a backflip here out of Tokyo. And then we have this young Flatland BMX rider. He was actually doing a triple decade here. But I climbed up uh, in behind a TV screen, a giant TV screen, and shot this from there because I, I saw it earlier in the day and I really wanted to get it. So playing with these shadows can really add another dimension to your image. Now saying that, getting down below, there's also something else you can see, which are these reflections in the water. This puddle, it had rained the day before. I knew this puddle would be a cool angle to shoot, and I knew that this plane would be coming in any moment. And it's the Japanese writers, so the Japanese media would like this image. So I waited, 
and I uh, got down on the ground as low as I could and got my camera close to that water and got this really cool reflection. At DJ events, a lot of times the DJ uh, table will be reflective. If it's not, I might even put my phone down and use that as a reflective surface. Maybe in the future I'll show a video on how to shoot like that. Uh, but you can, by going down, I could put these, uh, all these machines in the front and add some front bokeh, give an extra depth, extra layer to the image, which always makes it a little bit more interesting. And it's always good to make your shots unique and interesting. So the one kind of rule for composition that a lot of people talk about is the rule of thirds. So this is actually a very simple and a very easy to use rule of composition that I find uh, I tend to use naturally now in almost every shot I take. So basically, as you can see here on the screen here, we have one, two, three, four lines and they intersect in four places and basically you create three columns and three rows. Yeah, so we have this shot here of Orlando jumping out of a helicopter in uh, Shirahama in Japan. And just to show you what I mean by the rule of thirds, if we push the button here, I get this cross section here and you can see that where these lines cross up on these, the third, either you know, the third of the height or the third of the width, is where I want to be putting the main part of my image, maybe the action or the person's face or something like that. And you know, I don't know the scientific reason behind this. I just, um, I think it's pleasing to the eye. People say it, for the brain, it makes a nice composition, easy to understand image. So if you're going for something simple and nice and clean, this is a really easy way to create a, a pleasing composition. So let's go through and show a few examples. So here again, we have Rina from uh, the Red Bull 3 style that we did up in Sapporo. And I put her right on the third side, uh, the left, and the logo on the right third. So, you know, double rule of thirds going on here. So here we have one of the riders from the Red Bull X Fighters in Osaka. And again, pop, we got the, the right third of the image here is where I put him in the shot. Nice balance with the castle. And another one from the same competition, this is Levi Sherwood. And again, on the left side now with the composition for the row of thirds. So as I go through, you know, portrait, left side, action, left side. Uh, so it's a really easy way to use your, your positioning of the person and the composition in the image if you keep this in mind. And the great thing is a lot of cameras, when you're looking through the viewfinder, you can set it so these lines actually come up onto your viewfinder. So you can do this on the fly and just, you know, really have an easy time of creating this rule of thirds composition. Now, saying that, you know, rule of thirds, it's not a ground in rule, like where if you shoot any other way, it's going to be wrong and people are going to ridicule or anything like that. It doesn't matter. So sometimes I actually like just throwing the, the person right in the middle of the image just to kind of mix it up a bit. And you know, it works for the certain images at certain times. So you know, play with it. You know, if you're not sure about what to do with your composition, with where you put your athlete in that, think of the rule of thirds and think, okay, well the jump's here, there's something I want to show here, so let's put the athlete over here. And because I want to show the environment, I want to shoot horizontal, I want to emphasize the height, so I'm gonna get a bit lower. So you know, just keeping these things in mind when you're shooting can really help. And you just take like, you know, 10 seconds to think about this before you shoot. Uh, not just spray and pray, because you know, you never get anything really from that. Uh, it can really help your photography a lot. And this stuff all goes through my mind in like a split second now because I've been doing it for so long. Another really important thing when shooting action sports specifically is, and photography in general, is timing. Timing is really, really crucial with action sports. If you don't have the correct timing, even if you have a cool image, the athlete might not be happy. Your core uh, audience of that sport might not be happy. They might not enjoy the image as much as you would wish. Even if it's like a cool sunset and you got a cool strobe shot, but really, you know, for myself, if it's not going for that core audience and really being true to that, then I kind of don't shoot that way. So, you know, timing is really, really crucial, like I said, in the action. So, you know, having these peak action moments that are really showing the extremes of what the athlete is doing, the extreme length that they're going, the extreme amount that they're putting their arms out in that is really, really important. Um, and it's different for every sport. So actually it's different for every athlete as well. So some athletes on this left side, this is Gonta. Some athletes will actually do this trick differently even though it's the same trick. Um, so you have to kind of really know who you're shooting and what you're shooting as much as possible. Skateboarding, you know, now I'm the first to admit I am, I don't understand the skateboarding timing as well as I wish I would. Uh, every skateboarder seems to like to have the deck at a different angle when you're shooting and things like that. I picked this image basically because I could see the branding on his deck. You can see the trucks and the wheels and everything like that. And his body's fully up in that. So for me, this was good timing. Uh, maybe if you're a skateboarder, you think, oh, I wish it was a little bit different. But that's when you have to talk to your talk to your athletes. This was during a competition, so I couldn't really talk to them. But, you know, I like the image in the end. Now saying that, like I just said, you know, talking to your athlete, talking to the person you're shooting with is extremely important. Uh, we have this shot here of Ike. 
really good friend of mine. He's a really cool guy. I took him out to uh, Shinjuku Park and we were shooting here. We got two strobes, so I couldn't shoot high sequence of images, so it was one shot. Um, and I was getting him actually a little bit higher above the bike. I was what I thought would be the peak of the action, the best spot. But showing him the images and talking to him, he was actually like, well, you know, I actually like it better when I'm coming down just a bit. The bike uh, position and that, it looks better and my legs look a bit more better. So I was like, okay, let's try to do that. So I had to change on the fly, change my way of thinking and uh, adjust it because, you know, I don't want to just tell him, no, this is better when he's telling me that he wants me to do something different, right? I want to work with my athlete and not just force him to do something that he doesn't want to do. And in the end, we got an image that we both love. You know, I couldn't care less if he was up an inch more. If he's happy with it here, awesome. So now saying this, you know, just a quick quiz, you don't have to, maybe, you know, tell me in the comments which one you thought it was, but uh, A, B, or C, which one do you think is the better timing? Now we did this, I shot this maybe four times here with Kenichi, um, and in the end, I asked him, you know, which one do you like the most? The drum roll goes to C. So I liked his body position here on, uh, on A as well, but he really liked how he looked on C. So we went with C as the final image, you know. Shoot a bunch of shots that are similar. Maybe you can't tell. So ask your athlete which one is better. Which one do they prefer? It's always the best way to go. Now, there are some timings that you can control as a photographer. So this shot here, this is in Kobe. That's uh, Flatland Rider here. I was shooting for Flat Arc. It was a really cool event that I love doing. Um, and I actually walked by here the day before and noticed this light here hitting this in the late afternoon. Beautiful light. It looks like California almost with the palm trees in the back. And it was amazing. And I thought to myself, I need to shoot here tomorrow. I have to shoot somebody here tomorrow. So the next day when you were going around, I asked this rider here. I was like, hey, can I shoot you in the afternoon when you're done your riding? He's like, yeah, sure. So we went over and had a little session. You know, I can control the time that I take him over there, the timing of the lighting and stuff like that. I can't control if it's sunny or not, but it was, so that's great. That helps. But I can control when I go and shoot. So this is really critical, you know. If you can, learn where the lighting is on the spot that you want to shoot. What's the best lighting? Maybe it's coming between some buildings or it's over. It's going to duck behind a mountain, so i got to be there at a certain time before that. And stuff like that, you know. The more you know, the better. So the more you can control that time when you're going to shoot, the better images you'll get. And here, like I just said, with this plane shot with the reflection, I knew this plane was coming in and I knew when it was going to come in because I was paying attention to what's going on. So I waited for it, got the shot, and I moved on. But, you know, I could control the timing of this because I knew when they were coming in and I was watching it. Here again, two images. Now, it's not, it's not action, but even when I'm out in the street doing street photography, which I love to do, I can still kind of control a little bit of the timing that I want to use. I saw a taxi go by and I could see the reflections in the taxi of these lights above here in Chinatown in Yokohama. So I waited. I waited and uh, waited for good timing of this taxi to come back through again, another one, and I got this shot. Would have been kind of empty and bland without this taxi in there with the reflections, I think. This shot here is in Hiroshima. I really like the, the shrine here. Um, but it kind of, again, without the people in it, it would have been a bit more of a boring shot. So what did I do? I waited for the best timing for people coming through. I created that situation and waited for it. And lo and behold, a couple came through and I took that photo. Now, one thing when I'm shooting people is I am always having fun. So I like to have the people that I'm shooting also have fun. So, you know, relax and enjoy yourself. And sometimes you can get some really nice smiles. I'm a big dork when I'm shooting. I just say the stupidest stuff all the time. But all I want to do is make my athletes more relaxed and having fun. You know, some people are great on the dance floor, but they're not great in front of a camera. It's just not natural for them. So, it, you know, making people laugh as much as I can. Finding natural smiles during a competition is always great. You know, me and Vicky are good friends. So when I put the camera towards him and smile, he gives me a smile back. It's all about making that connection with people, even if you only have a few seconds. And you know, when an athlete gets something done, this is Tokura. He did a, a front flip catch for, to the, the ball during the uh, best trick competition. And this smile here, I love this. He's so happy he got it. All the athletes are super excited for him. So, you know, getting cool shots of people being cool and, yeah, I'm an athlete, I'm cool. You know, that's great. You need those sometimes. But I love these natural smiles and that that you get in images. It's just absolutely beautiful. Now, one last thing I always talk about during my uh, workshops when I'm, you know, this is a beginner's workshop, so I have to keep in mind that not everybody has a DSLR, not everybody has a D5 or, you know, the nicest next Sony camera and stuff like that. But in the end, you know, you can take cool images with any kind of camera. I took these two shots with my cell phone. You know, I had a really cool kind of cheap fisheye lens that I attached to my, my camera and I got this shot here on the left. And on the right, it's just a normal, the normal camera mode. So, you know, all the stuff that I've said now, you know, horizontal, vertical, I'm lower, I'm above, rule of thirds, timing and everything. That has, none of this has anything to do with what camera you use. It's all universal. 
So, you know, you can be listening to this and thinking, oh, you know, I don't, I don't, I only have my crappy cell phone or I only have like a five-year-old DSLR with one lens. It doesn't matter. You can take cool shots with any photography equipment as long as you have these really important and base composition ideas in your mind and aware when you're out shooting. So really, you know, the last thing I always tell people is don't be discouraged because I'm showing you all these images that I shot with like $8,000 or $10,000 worth of equipment. I can get cool shots with my cell phone. Really, like it's not hard. You just push the button and you shoot a million images and pick the one that you like the most and there you go. And then some cool editing or this. What makes these shots cool is not what I shot them with, but what's in the image and how I shot the composition and stuff like that. So remember, everything I told you now, doesn't matter what camera you're using. It's universal for every type of photography. Okay, now that's pretty much everything. Thank you for listening. Bit of a longer video again, but uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments, maybe something didn't really click with you, so you want to ask me about it, go go for it in the in the in the comments below. I love talking to you guys. I love answering any questions you have. Hit me up on social media if you want. You can find me on Instagram and that. Um, yeah, and always, you know, hey, what everyone says. Leave a like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm doing this because I like it. I really like sharing with people. I really like teaching people. Uh, I wish I could get out and do a workshop somewhere down in Shibuya or something right now. But as it is, the world is not allowing that right now. Sooner than later, we'll be doing it again. So, yeah, if you're in Japan and you see me doing a workshop, come and say hi. Cheers. Have a good one.